This video is going to talk about how to create a HASA diagram of a POSET. set. And what it's going to do specifically is look at the process of creating that HASA diagram from the digraph of your partial order, of the relation that's tied in with your POSET. set. So, first thing that you do is you want to start with the digraph of your POSET. set. So we'll have an example that walks through each of these steps. Once you have the digraph of your POSET, set, what you're going to do is you're going to remove all loops from the digraph. Now, why would we do this? Because a POSET set and specifically the relation tied in with your POSET set is a, has the reflexive property, which means what happens, we know already that all vertices in the digraph will have loops on them. And one of the things that the Hasse diagram does is the Hasse diagram is a way to take all of the intense clutter that is going to be in our digraph and bring it down to the usable information we actually want to deal with. Now, step two, we're going to remove all of the transitive edges in the digraph. And here's what transitive edges are. If you have A is related to B and B is related to C, in your digraph, and we know that would ha we would ha have the transitive property holding because we are on a partial order, which means you're guaranteed to have this third relation, this third arrow right here, that's A is related to C. So removing the transitive edge is removing that longer edge, that colored blue edge, and say, hey, we're gonna kn we know that we have the transitive property employed, so if we can travel along any path, whether it's just using one arrow or multiple arrows, by way of transitivity, we know we can get to that A to C, even if we're only physically going to write the two arrows of A to B and B to C. Okay. So that's the second thing is you remove all of your transitive edges. Now, the last thing that you do is we're going to actually switch out and not have arrows. We're going to remove the arrows and put in just line segments. Now you can't do that in general because the arrows t point you in which direction to go. So in order to keep the orientation of knowing which direction to travel, you redraw your vertices of your digraph so that all the little arrows are pointing in an upwards direction. Okay. So if you've got two guys that are related to each other, maybe the little you redraw them so the arrows pointed straight up. The arrow doesn't have to point straight up it could also point over to the side, but what you're not allowed to have is you're not allowed to have those edges, those directed edges, pointing either horizontally or pointing down. So those are the vertices that you would redraw. Once you've redrawn your remaining edges in your digraph where the arrows are pointing upwards, you then erase the arrowhead and just turn all those little arrows into straight line segments. Officially, the undirected edges are the straight line segments, and the directed edges are the arrows. So let us look at an example of doing this. And the example I've got prepped up for us is on the building set of A, B, C. And the partial order that's going to correspond to that or go with this set is going to be the ordered pairs A, 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 B, A, C, B, 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 C, and C, C. And I'm not going to go through why that's a partial order. I'm just going to claim that it is. Um, you guys can check on your own that this actually is a partial order. So first thing is we're going to look at the digraph. And remember the key thing with the digraph is what? Well, we're going to draw in our three vertices. So we've got A, we've got B, and we've got C. And then we put in the appropriate edges. So we have AA, AB, and AC. And then we do the exact same thing for each of the other ordered pairs in the partial order. So our digraph would then be this figure with all of those arrows. Then the next thing we do is we're going to move, remove all of our loops. And in this example, when we remove all the loops, since it's such a small example to start with, we've actually removed half of the edges, half the arrows that were in our digraph just because we had so few of them. So this now would be the picture after the first step of removing all the loops. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to remove all of our transitive edges. Alright, so when we're thinking about removing our transitive edges, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for things where you've got a length 2 path 
and the transitive edge, the edge we want to remove, is the shortcut. It goes from the beginning of your length two path to the end of your length two path. So this is the guy we want to remove. Well, when we look in our picture, we currently have what? We currently only have three directed edges, okay? So if we start at A, we could go to C, but then we can't go anywhere else, so there's no length two paths there. But if we start at A and we go to B, well, we can continue on to C, so that would be a length two path, which means we need to remove the edge from A to C. That would be a transitive edge. Now, once we remove that transitive edge, notice there's no other length two path left in our digraph where there's a shortcut. Now it's just the length two path left. Then the next step is we're going to reorient the vertices so that all of the arrows are pointing either directly up or at an upward orientation. Now for this particular graph, the only way to make the arrows point upward is to sort of unbend this guy. The lowest vertex that we're going to end up having here is A. And then pointing straight up, we'll get to vertex B. And then pointing straight up, we'll get to vertex C. Now, that's not the finished answer yet, but we're almost there. So to finish this off, the final version, and specifically the Hasse diagram, is you take your reoriented picture and remove all of the arrowheads, so change all those directed arrows into just plain old line segments. And that's it. That's how to convert a digraph into a Hasse diagram. So last comma is two definitions. Two individual elements inside of a poset are considered comparable exactly if they're related to each other. Notice what this means. This means in the Hasse diagram, that you have a connection, such as A is connected to B, or B connected to A. Now notice, since some of the edges were actually removed from the original digraph to get your Hasse diagram, this also means you can have situations like A up to some other vertex, and then continue up to B. In other words, it doesn't have to be one edge that connects it. It can be a path in the Hasse diagram that connects. The only thing is one of the two of these vertices, A or B, has to be below the other one. So maybe you have something like this. Here, A and B would still be comparable even though you went through that middle vertex C. Now. Last thing is a type of poset. There's a specific type of poset called a chain, and this is where every single pair of elements that you could pick in your poset are in fact related to each other, and it turns out, or comparable is the specific word there, and it turns out chains are, well, there's a reason they're the name, they look exactly like this, and I'm not bothering to actually label any of these vertices. They just look like a big fat vertical line with a bunch of vertices on them. The smallest one would look like that with two vertices. Notice an example of a chain is exactly that previous example that we had where we built the Hasse diagram. This would be an example of a chain with three vertices, and that's a special type of Hasse diagram, or really a special type of poset.